There are six months left of 2023 and it's enough time to kickstart your UX design career and change your professional life. Here's a six months roadmap to help get you started. There are four pillars to learning UX design, learning tools and processes, learning UX patterns, designing features and designing products. During this six month journey, you will go through all of those phases first, and then we will focus on building your portfolio and landing your first job. I've created the Becoming a UX Designer guide that I will link in the description. It's a knowledge base that includes all the information that I will talk about today. I will be updating it as the time goes by with new resources, courses and articles that I find and create. During the first month of your UX design journey, you will need to learn essential tools and processes used in the industry. That includes familiarizing yourself with the design software and how to use it effectively. I recommend starting with Figma because it is the most powerful and the most popular one. In addition to that, you will need to learn various UX design methodologies and research techniques. I recommend learning those things simultaneously so you can add some variety to your learning experience so that every day you can spend a couple of hours learning theory and a couple of hours exploring Figma. Now let's talk in detail about learning UX methodologies. If I were to start teaching myself UX design from scratch all over again, those are the resources that I would start with. And of course, I will link them in the description and in our guide. First, we have the article, when, which, design thinking, lean, design sprint, agile. And this is a really good intro article to all the methodologies that you will be hearing about over and over again as you learn UX. Design thinking and the double diamond model. And it is a deep dive into the double diamond model methodology and all of the stages. And it is extremely important because basically it will be a foundation for every single design project that you will execute over time. Next, we have the Google UX series, Intro to UX, What is UX Research, and the UX Certificate Playlist. And here we're diving in deeper into the details of the execution of those steps. And I really like the content of this series. I wish it, the videos were a little bit more condensed, but this is just my preference, just a heads up that you may find yourself skipping some more boring parts, but it is still worth it. Then we move on to different methods and deliverables. And there is an article, a comprehensive list of UX design methods and deliverables. And it is amazing to explore because it's a really comprehensive list, but it may be a little bit intimidating at first. Of course, you don't have to memorize everything. You don't even have to apply all of those methods in your first projects, but it's a really good point of reference. I also recommend the series of videos I recorded about usability testing. I will put the link up here and in the description. I walk you through the whole process step by step. And in addition, you can copy the usability testing plan template in Notion and use it in your next projects. In addition to videos and articles, I also encourage you to read two books during this first month. Usually people recommend starting with something more beginner friendly, like design of everyday things. But I think during the six month journey, we need to be really efficient and focus on books that will push you forward the most. First, we have Lean UX. It is a deep dive into Lean methodology for user experience design. You will learn how to use your time and resources the best way possible, iterate on your designs and deliver high quality outcomes. It is sort of a classic book already next to the Lean startup that started the whole movement. And the second one is Sprint, a book about design sprints. It's a method that helps teams go from an idea to a validated low fidelity prototype within five days. It's a really useful resource because you will learn about different workshops and exercises that you can do, and you will shape your view on a validation and exploration. Of course, you need to remember that design sprints are not an answer to every single design problem. It's mostly for the early exploration. You will still need to go through a proper design phase, prototyping, testing, etc. Now let's move on to learning the design tool, Figma. You need to be able to digitize your ideas for interfaces, collaborate with your team, and deliver high quality mockups for your engineering team. You should start with the basics, how to use the controls you see on the screen, add elements, and build very simple prototypes. Figma provides videos for beginners on their YouTube channel. It's called Intro to Figma Playlist. You can also see different videos online, look for tutorials, or even read the documentation. To practice your Figma skills and get better understanding of UI elements and proportions, I recommend you start copying the interfaces of your favorite applications. You can take screenshots and place them in Figma, then try to redraw them without using any ready libraries or components. I know it sounds a little bit boring, but trust the process. You will need to analyze the interfaces like you never before, and you will need to understand the proportions and composition. 
You can also start exploring free icon libraries like material design icons, post for icons, or font awesome, and try to add them to your designs while trying to understand different formats and sizes. And the last step in learning Figma is understanding design systems. Figma created an 80 minute course that is free on their YouTube channel that will give you a great introduction to design systems and it is more than enough for now. You can also execute this step in parallel with the learning of UX patterns that you will do in month two. You can start now and implement your knowledge later. As the time goes by, there may be some changes made to the Figma interface and there are some videos online that may feel outdated at that point because they are not align 100% with what you see on your screen, and it is perfectly normal. Reading the documentation and looking for answers online is a part of becoming a UX designer, and it is really good time right now to practice. Figma has such an engaged community that basically 99% of problems, you can just solve them by one Google search and one minute of reading. Math 2 is about learning UX patterns, recurring design solutions that help solve common design problems. As a UX designer, you need to be familiar with those patterns and be able to use them in your designs. It is really important to learn them upfront, so when it's time to design, you have something to fall back on and implement. There are two methods of learning UX patterns that I recommend. First is analyzing design systems, and this is how I started learning UX, and it is the fastest and easiest way to wrap your head around different UX patterns and UI patterns. I recommend starting with material design because it's the easiest to consume, most beginner friendly, and very comprehensive. You can learn about different components and guidelines to use them and build them. Also, they provide a Figma library that you can use in your projects, especially if you're designing for Android apps. I also recommend analyzing Polaris by Shopify. There will be a lot of components and topics that are overlapping, but you will see how different design systems treat them when it comes to naming, usage, and restrictions. And the last one is Human Interface Guidelines by Apple. It's the best if you explore it as the last one because it's the least beginner friendly. At the same time, it's extremely important since Apple products are very popular. And as a designer, you need to know how to design for different devices and operation systems. Another method to learn about UX patterns is to explore my UX pattern series. I continuously develop the library of patterns and videos and articles, and I will link everything in the description and in our knowledge base. In this series, I not only explain the patterns and components, but we also dive deeper into how to design them, what mistakes to avoid, and what to pay attention to. We also analyze those UX patterns in different products and across design systems. Once you have a solid understanding of design processes, tools, and UX patterns, now it's time to start designing features for digital products. You need to implement everything that you've learned from sketching, wireframing, through prototyping and usability testing. Also, you will be using Figma, so you will have more time and opportunity to practice. To start designing features, you need to come up with design briefs. The idea is to add functionality to an existing product that you know very well, so you have insight regarding what could be useful. First, define what you're designing, for whom, what problem you're solving, and what is the goal of the project. For example, you can add the timeline view to your favorite task management tool or add commenting to your streaming app. Remember to align your solution with the current design system. Get creative with your ideas, but stay reasonable. Think about a feature that this product would actually need, given their audience, the business model, and the strategy. Also, try to keep the project really small. There is no need to solve multiple problems at once. In this particular phase, singular focus is necessary. Learning how to design features will come in handy when you join your first team. You will most likely be contributing to an existing product, not designing one from scratch. In month four, it's time to start designing full digital products. You will need to use the same tools and methodologies as you did in month three. But this time you will need to think about an idea for a product, solve all the problems, think about all the flows and create a design system. To come up with a design brief for your project, you can go with one of those two approaches. First, solve a problem that you see in the world. Find a solution to a problem that bothers you personally. Find something that is really well known to you. Right now, it will be really overwhelming to learn about a new area like up for a doctor or a programmer. And number two, solve the same problem as another product, but better. For example, let's imagine that you're using a fitness app that gives you videos on demand, but all the videos are mixed together and it's not really useful for you. You can design an app with a proprietary score system that allows you to go to the videos that are actually aligned with your fitness level and goals. 
To do it properly, you really need to know the niche and have experience with multiple products. You can either come up with something totally new or gather all the good aspects from multiple products and eliminate the downsides. I have a full lesson on how to come up with design briefs for your portfolio projects in my free 5-day portfolio masterclass. I will link it in the description and in the knowledge base as well. Once you've designed features and products, now it's time to start building your portfolio. It is a collection of your best projects and it's really essential to getting hired as a UX designer. You will need to create four to five really high quality projects, find the platform to host your portfolio and build the case studies. Creating projects is probably the most time consuming. To keep us within the set time frame, I recommend creating three projects where you design a feature and one to two projects where you design the whole product. Of course, you can use work from months three and four. You can make changes and adjustments as you see fit because you've already gained more experience over time. Also, remember to follow the right design process and document everything because you will need those artifacts in your case studies. So don't delete anything and save versions of your files. When it comes to choosing the platform for your portfolio, you can choose between three options that I will present to you in a second. First, we have website builders like Webflow, Framer, or Wix. They give you the most freedom when it comes to how your portfolio will look like and the sections that you can build. Of course, the most beginner friendly is Wix, but if you have a little bit more time, I recommend learning Webflow or Framer. It shouldn't be that difficult because you already know Figma. Webflow and Framer give you the most creative control, but in addition to that, you're learning a marketable skill that you can actually put in your portfolio, resume, and even look for freelance clients. So I think it's really worth it. Another available option are social platforms like Dribbble or Behance. I do not recommend those as your main portfolio because they are not 100% adjusted to UX case studies. On Dribbble, you focus more on publishing mockups and graphics. On Behance, we have longer structure, but there is a lot of limitations when it comes to the structure of the sections, and also they are not fully adjusted to mobile. Of course, you can publish your designs in both of those platforms to build your, build your social media presence and potentially get some freelance work as well. And the last alternative is UX Polio or Notion. And that effort-wise would be between building your own website and using a social platform. UX Folio is dedicated to creating UX case studies. You will be able to choose from templates that are UX specific sections and really build your portfolio quickly. Notion can also be a really good alternative, especially if you customize the workspace visuals and pay attention to some UX decisions, like keeping the structure flat so that people can explore the pages easily without going through many nested pages. Now that you've chosen the platform, it's time to create your portfolio landing page and case studies. And creating a portfolio is an art in itself, and I will not share the details in this video, but I will share some resources with you. First, we have the portfolio playlist. I will link it up here and in the description. It's a growing collection of the videos where I talk about the topic of creating your portfolio and improving it. And then we have my free 5-day portfolio masterclass. This course will point you in the right direction and help you level up your portfolio to more senior level. It includes topics like goals, text and structure, how to choose projects for your portfolio, how to present the design process, mockups and visuals, and how to come up with the ideas for your design projects. And lastly, we have portfolio checklist. It is a list of things that you need to include in your portfolio landing page and in every case study. I'll link the Notion document that you can duplicate and fill out for every case study in the description. Before we move on to month six, I would like to mention one more thing. Since your portfolio will contain personal projects, it's really important that you mark them clearly in your portfolio as such. Add a personal project label to every case study. You need to avoid misleading the reviewers because it will be the worst experience if they invite you to the recruitment process and during a portfolio review, it turns out that those were personal projects. It's a really bad start to a professional relationship to be disappointed or maybe even felt to feel misled. Finally, during month six, it's time to start networking and applying for jobs. You can attend different design events, join online communities and LinkedIn groups. To help you prepare for the recruitment process and improve your chances of getting hired, here are some useful resources that I would like to share with you. First, we have the comprehensive guide to finding a kick-ass UX job, a great introduction to the hiring process and choosing the right job for you. And then we have the job playlist and I will link it up here. It's a growing collection of videos where I share my insights regarding the recruitment process, how to answer questions and prepare for the interviews. And lastly, we have UX Job Interview Sprint. I've created the course that walks you step-by-step step through the preparation process for the UX interviews. It teaches you about every single type of a UX interview and how to prepare for it. 
In addition, we're answering over 30 of the most popular questions that you can encounter during QX interviews and how to answer them strategically and with a good approach. You can sign up to the waiting list right now, or if you're watching it later on, you can just join the course. During the first week of this month, you should apply to between 20 to 30 UX jobs. During week two and three, you'll be getting some replies and hopefully landing some interviews. Of course, in the meantime, keep on looking for opportunities and sending out applications. And hopefully by the end of this month, you will be interviewing with some of the companies and maybe even land an offer. Of course, the results depend on many factors, including the ones that are out of your control, like state of economy or time of the year. If the process is not going that quickly for you, don't worry about it. Just put the effort in and by the end of this month, you will be well on your way to becoming a UX designer and starting your design career. Before we close, to make the task of looking for open positions easier, here are the job boards that I use. All of them include also remote jobs, if that's something that you're interested in. First, we have LinkedIn jobs. Probably it is the best one because it has the largest list of jobs and across different locations. Then we have Dribble jobs. Choose UX and UI there and you can find some hidden gems sometimes. Then we have remote woman jobs and it is a really good list of open positions, even if you're not a woman. Next, we have well-found and it used to be Angelist talent. I highly recommend creating the profile here because it will link you with startups that are looking for UX designers. Then we have Smooth Remote. It is a really good platform for remote design jobs. Sometimes I find some jobs that are not listed anywhere else. Then we have other well-known platforms for remote work, like remote.co, Working Nomads, We Work Remotely or Remote OK. I've listed them all together because they usually share the same listings. And lastly, we have websites of your favorite companies. Many companies, especially the big and popular ones, add job listings only to their website. It is a really good thing to have a list of those companies that you're interested in and go through it every month or every other month. In conclusion, becoming a UX designer within the next six months is an achievable goal. By following the roadmap, you will learn all the necessary skills, build your portfolio and apply for jobs. It will be a very intense time, but your growth will be immense. Remember to visit the Becoming a UX Designer guide, check the resources in the description and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video very soon.